This is a new model inverter that's all in one. It has the solar charge controller, the AC charger, and the inverter all built into one package to make this really easy to go off grid. But the most amazing part of this package is the price point. At $900, I don't see anything else on the market that can beat it. Now, I don't know if it's any good or not, so we're gonna test it in this video. But I can't believe they got this much stuff into a package for 900 bucks. Here we go. Hi, I'm David. Welcome to my channel where I like to DIY renewable energy and energy efficiency projects. This video, we're going to be looking at the GrowWatt SPF 5000 ES model. I bought this from Signature Solar out of Texas. It sells for $900, and if you decide to buy one, you can get 5% off using coupon code DAVIDPAUSE, and that is also an affiliate link which will help out this channel if you choose to use it, and thank you if you do. There are a ton of features in this inverter, so we might not be able to get to everything in this one video. We're gonna run through the specifications, then we're gonna open up the cover, avoid my warranty in doing so, but we'll look inside. Then we'll connect it up to a battery and we'll see what we can power with it. This is a 5,000 watt inverter for $900. Now that alone is a great price for a 5,000 watt inverter. But it is a high frequency inverter, so it's kind of on the light side. It's not as light as other 5,000 watt inverters, but it's certainly not as heavy as some of the big transformer based inverters that I've worked with. Now this is an international model, which means you should be able to set the hertz and the exact voltage somewhere between 220 and 240 volts. So if that's the case, I'll be setting this to 240 volts. This is not a split phase inverter. It's single phase, meaning it's only putting out 240 volts. Now that will work fine for certain loads, such as if you're just powering something like an electric water heater at 240 volts, that's cool. But if you want split phase, you're gonna to need to add a transformer to it. Now I'm gonna be showing that later in the video. Now the second big feature of this is that it is a solar MPPT charge controller. MPPT stands for Maximum Power Point Tracking. That means that you'll get more efficiency out of this and you can use a high voltage array, in this case up to 450 volts, which means that you decrease on your wiring size and your combiner box and things like that. But this is a charge controller that can charge a battery up to 100 amps, meaning from here into the battery it can put out up to 100 amps. I paid $900 for my Victron charge controller a few years ago, and that is only a charge controller. This is also a AC charger, meaning you can supply this with 240 volts alternating current from something like the grid or a generator and charge your battery. And it can do that at 80 amps. Now again, that's actually a really good price. Let me show you a comparison. Last year, I bought this AC charger off of Amazon for $130. It is a 10 amp charger. That means that I paid $13 per amp of charging. I bought Signature Solar's charger. This is a 25 amp charger, and I paid $300, which is $12 per amp of charging. So a little bit cheaper than the one from Amazon. This inverter charger, can charge at 80 amps and cost $900, which means it's $11.25 per amp of charging. So this is actually cheaper than the charger from Amazon or the charger from Signature Solar, where they're just chargers. This is a charger and an inverter and a solar charge controller. <laughs> so again, any one of these features would be worth the $900, but you're getting three things that are all each individually worth $900 <laughs> packed into one unit. So again, I don't know how they did this <laughs> and I'm really hoping that it doesn't just blow up on me, but we're, you know, we're gonna find out. Kind of am skeptical when things like this uh, have such a low price point, but gosh, if they're not exciting to try, because you know the whole market, every year that I keep doing these videos, the market just keeps getting better and better. The industry is making equipment that just is getting more and more bang for the buck every year. And I can't believe just in the few years that I've been making videos, just how inexpensive products have become. Now when you buy this inverter from Signature Solar, you get a couple of things with it. 
Uh, you're going to get a little pack here with a CD. Now I think this little CD is going to be the software for the computer. You're also going to get a few cables that will allow you to connect this to the computer as well as parallel it to multiple units because you can parallel up multiples of these together. So if you ran uh, two, three, six of these, whatever, together, you're just increasing your total output. Now, not every inverter will allow you the opportunity to parallel them up together because the sine wave needs to be in sync between this inverter and the next one that it's parallel to and the next one. This has that ability to do so. And it doesn't cost any more. You don't have to buy an additional feature. There are other brand inverters on the market that require you to purchase additional devices which will cost maybe five or $600 just to be able to sync up two or three or whatever of these together. This one, it comes built in. So again, that's an additional thing built in for the package, for the money, more value, more bang for the buck. <laughs> the bottom of this inverter is where all the connections are made. So we're gonna unscrew this cover plate and that will expose where we make our connections. Underneath we have a pair of fans. We have our main positive and negative post. These are where you're gonna connect up the battery. Right here is your PV positive and negative. This is where we're gonna screw in the solar array. And then over here we're gonna have your AC input and your AC output, line and neutral. So that needs 240 volts on a single line. Down here on the bottom, we have an input breaker, and that looks like a 40 amp AC breaker. These ports are gonna be plastic bushings, so if you run your wire straight through here, uh, it won't chafe on the sheet metal. Then we have a bunch of different communications here for your computer stuff, which I'm not good with, and then we have some parallel connection. That's if you're going to run multiple of these inverters together. Let's take a look at our wire input. This is a four aught. Can the four aught fit through there? No, so a 4 aught cannot fit through those holes. Not that you would need a 4 aught. Let's go ahead and take off the cover, void the warranty, which is right here, they have a warranty sticker on the top. But that's all right, we'll pop that off and take a look at the inside inverter. So let's be careful of this display when we pull it up. So there's some kind of ribbon cable attaching the display to the front. It looks like the fans are gonna be directing the airflow inside this plastic shroud. And that is probably for these aluminum heat sinks. These are called MOSFETs and they're gonna be switching on and off very quickly. Now in one of my previous videos, I made a joke and I called these donuts because I don't know if they're specifically a a toroidal transformer or an inductor or something like that because I take the cover off for you guys. I'm not an electronics engineer. I don't know exactly what I'm looking at here, but I do know that it looks pretty cool. Now over here we can see capacitors. Now those capacitors look like a dead short when they're empty and that's why when you first put a battery connection to this, you have to be careful that you don't send too much inrush current to charge those capacitors. Otherwise, sometimes you can blow the capacitors or you can blow out the solder to them, the solder traces. These are gonna be some relays and those are switching relays for when you're running on the AC input versus running in inverter mode. These bottom connections are where the wires are coming out to the loads. So we have the ground, but then we have a blue and brown wire down there. Let's see if we can find a gauge on them. So it says 10 gauge. So they're using 10 gauge wire to run to the output. 10 gauge wire is good for 30 amps according to the NEC. And this is at 240 volts and 5,000 watts. So that is plenty, so that's good. Well, I hope that flyover is fun. Like I said before, I don't know exactly what I'm looking at, but I like to look inside for your benefit. The next step is to actually fire it up and power on a load. 
This water heating element is rated for 240 volts, 4,500 watts. I can't screw this water heater in because it's longer than the bucket, so I'll just drop it in like that and it's sitting mostly submerged in the water. I want to make sure that it's touching that uh, little piece of angle steel that I put down there in the bottom so it doesn't melt through the plastic. Now here's my positive wire from the battery and right here we can put it on that stud. There we go. Sorry about my hand in the way to start that nut on there. Now we can do the other one. So this will be the negative side and we'll take that off. Run the negative wire in. Now remember, when I set things up on the bench, they're just for testing purposes. I'm using some things that I have on hand. So I just grabbed some wire. Now this is undersized. On page five of the manual, it says to use two gauge wire. Now that's the minimum. You can go more than that so long as you can make it fit and to torque it to two to three Newton meters. But when you go and hook yours up, you'll wanna use at least a two gauge wire. Uh, which I will be doing when I hook this up in its permanent location. You guys might notice that I'm connecting these terminals up before I turn on the battery. That's a little bit different. Usually I grab a little resistor like this and pre-charge the capacitors, which we saw inside. But in this case, I'm using uh, this Gill brand battery bank. It turns out that inside each one of these batteries is a pre-charge resistor. Well, Signature Solar reached out to me and told me that this is a giant resistor built in here to do that exact thing. So it turns out that there's an additional feature here that I was not aware of. So when I turn this on, it will automatically do that limiting of the inrush. And now the inverter is turned on without blowing the capacitors. Some of you are curious how I attach that. That big copper strap there goes up to the bus bar there and onto the bus bar over on this side. So we have our positive and negative bus bars. Looks like the inverter turned on without anything blowing up. That's always a good sign. Now let's go through the menu and see if we can set this up. Uh, I have not worked with this menu before, so it might take me a little bit, but I'll edit it down so that it's quicker for you guys to see. This will be the battery, so 52.4 volts DC, and this is probably the output of 230 volts alternating current AC going to the house. And we're currently using 0% of the 5,000 watts that this inverter can output. Up here it says we need to press and hold for three seconds the enter button. Let's do that. And setting number one, output source priority, solar, awesome. Okay, so now we'll go to, oh, looks like we're gonna scroll down. So now we're on option number two. So we're in the manual on page 16. Now we went to option number two. Well, the options in this menu get pretty long and boring, so I'm just gonna skip ahead to some of the good ones and you can go through individually if you are programming your own inverter. The manual is pretty straightforward on what you need to do. Battery type. Now in this case, it says here lithium, but only when you have communication with the BMS. I might have a communication ability with this BMS, but I haven't looked into that yet. So at this point, I'm just gonna define this as user defined two, which is when lithium battery without BMS. There we go. Okay, so now that I switched this toggle switch to off, so we're in standby mode, I can now adjust this setting. Oh, oh wow, it looks like you can go pretty high. 240 volts is what I want. And output frequency, uh, it looks like it's set to 50 hertz. So we're gonna wanna change that to 60 hertz. So it is outputting 240 volts at this point. 
So that's accurate. And I'm just doing that on the side of that circuit breaker that I have coming out of the inverter. So that display is accurate. Oh, and I just heard the fans kick on. And it says we're using 82% of the load. And it says we're at 17.1 amps on the output. Let's take a look at the water heater. You can see all the bubbles starting to... So it's outputting 4.1 kilowatts. Out of the five kilowatts, this is able to output. Blowing out the top. So that's good, it's sucking in air at the bottom, blowing it past those heat exchangers and blowing it out the top, I can feel it. There's no vents up here, so it's only blowing out this side and this side over here. The fans are still running. The fans are quite a bit louder than say my SMA inverters. Well, the inverter worked well with the one water heater. We put on a 4,500 watt water heater. It actually was drawing more like 4.1 kilowatts instead of 4.5 kilowatts. The menu has 50 different options in there and it was easy enough to get through. And I'm glad that I didn't have to hook up a computer just to be able to program this. You can do it all on the display and that's good. This video was just part one where we got to look inside, we played with the menu, and we did put a 240 volt load on this. And all of that worked fine. In the upcoming videos on this inverter, there are more things to test. I have to hook this up to my solar array, which is outside, and we're going to see how well it can charge the batteries off the solar array. And I'm really excited for that because I have a 5.1 kilowatt solar array that we're gonna hook up to this. It should take up to 6,000 watts, so I want to make sure it doesn't blow up at 5.1 kilowatts. <laughs> now, in addition to that, we need to test this for 120 volt loads. Now, that is going to require something a little bit different. Now, from Signature Solar, I also bought this. This is a Solar Edge brand auto transformer. This auto transformer will allow us to take the 240 volts and get a neutral so that we have 120 volts split phase for the North American market. Now I'm excited to test that in an upcoming video, uh, but you'll have to stay tuned for those. Now if you want to pick up the inverter or the solar edge inverter or the Gilbat, now if you want to pick up anything that you've seen in this video from Signature Solar, uh, use the discount code DAVIDPAWS. That will get you 5% off and it also tracks the affiliate program which helps this channel out. I've already laid out what I'm going to be testing in some upcoming videos, but if there's any other questions that you have that you'd also like to see in some of the upcoming videos where I review this inverter, please leave them in the comments below. Please like, subscribe, comment, and share. Gonna start boiling our water here in a moment.